Here I am looking out at the Arabian Sea on the coast of India. Um, but to tell you how I got to this moment, let's rewind a few days. This is Malika. I met her randomly just about a week ago or less. She's so funny and fun. She makes amazing dosa and she has a cool bike. She lives here right across the street from me and we became fast friends, eating breakfast together, hanging out. Um, and just a few days after being friends, she invited me on a trip to her hometown to Mangalore. And when invitations like this come up, you gotta say yes. This is me doing a little outfit of the day because I love it when YouTubers do this and I've always wanted to do it myself. Hello. I'm standing here outside of Malika's house. I think she's taking a nap um, and maybe she overslept a little bit, but no worries. Um, and I think we're gonna go shopping together um, to get some Indian clothes for me because we're going to um, a ritual tomorrow at a temple and I think it would be nice to have something Indian or a little bit more traditional to wear to that. So uh, she's gonna take me to a shop and maybe to the mall as well. So let's see what we can find. Malika took me for a ride and we went to this store called Zudio, which to me seemed kind of like an Indian version of H&M or something like that. It wasn't too expensive. Honestly, pretty trendy, kind of fast fashion-y, which usually I'm not into. But for this, I just needed something quick and I wasn't sure if I was gonna be wearing it that many times. So I got this corta and pants and we headed out. She took me to her favorite coffee place and we sat and chatted about the trip coming up which was actually just happening the following day. So we had made plans to go together on her bike, um, but there ended up not being enough seats. So um, the new plan was to go on the bus. Um, Ashish and I went on the bus and Malika went separately on her bike. The next morning we went to the bus stop in Mysore and we boarded this bus to Mangalore which is a city on the coast um, and the bus ride took about six hours so uh, we did some napping, we did some people watching, some staring out the window. The women here in South India, or at least where we are, wear these beautiful flowers in their hair. I think it's so nice that they have fresh flowers every day. There were definitely some moments of just sitting there, not doing much, but it was a nice experience. The breeze was blowing through the window. This woman in front of us gave us some chips. And it didn't get too, too boring because the bus stopped pretty much every single hour for a bathroom break. At one of the stops, we got this paratha, which is kind of a fried bread. Um, and we ate that on the bus. We finally arrived to Mangalore after a long day of travel, but we were happy to be there, standing on the side of the road, wondering what would happen next. Um, and Malika was still riding her bike, so her two sisters picked us up. They were super nice and brought us to their house where we'd be staying for the night. They were instantly so welcoming and hospitable and kind of took us into their family. These are some of Malika's nephews. Um, and we headed with the family pretty much immediately to the kola or to the ritual that we'd be attending that night. So here we are entering the temple space. We made some offerings, made some donations. So the kola is a ritualistic dance that's performed by the Tulu people or the Tulu villages that are specific to this region around Mangalore. 
And here's kind of a look behind the scenes of the two dancers preparing for the ritual. Uh, and they're representing or actually becoming these two deities. We got to sit right up front, right in front of where everything was starting. And here the cola, the ritual is starting. And the two deities are starting to dance with these golden rings. And it was explained to me that these golden rings are very powerful and very significant. Not everyone can touch them. Um, and once those golden rings are actually on them, they put them around their ankle, they're not their human form anymore. They actually become the deity. And I'm here as an outsider. I'm a foreigner, of course, so I don't know exactly what they're doing and I'm not fully, fully understanding all of the elements here, but I could tell just by the energy, by observing, by witnessing this, that it was really powerful and something really sacred to witness. And I felt the energy starting to pick up and become more intense, faster. They started running. And even as it was getting more intense, everyone was sitting so quietly and reverently. As you can see, there were so many kids and even babies here. So as I sat there watching, I didn't fully know the meaning the whole time, but for me, it felt somehow healing and right to see this darker side of ourselves on display, this hungrier, fiercer part. Um, and to see that part and to just witness it without fear, without shame um, and accept that and actually feed that part of ourselves and of life. So by this part of the cola, you can see here, they're already wearing the golden rings around their ankles. So they're fully the deity now. They fully become this spirit. This one here, the darker one with the darker face, is Guliga, who is worshipped as a malevolent demon. And this one is more aggressive, um, more hungry, <laughs> and it's believed that Guliga possesses the power to ward off evil and prote protect against diseases. Here, Guliga is starting to get hungrier and hungrier and more energetic. So now he's going to start appealing for some food. This is the symbol of hunger. He wants something to eat. So they're going to start feeding Guliga as a way to worship him and to give him uh, what he wants. And this will help protect the villagers, protect the people here. So this 6 p.m. cola was actually a little bit more mild here. Guliga is drinking coconut after coconut after coconut, fulfilling his hunger and his thirst. But we went back to the uh, cola at 12 p.m. at midnight that same night, and at that one we weren't allowed to take photo or video. And that 12 p.m. one is more aggressive and more intense, and at that one, Guliga actually eats chickens. He rips the head off of so many chickens, maybe 10 or 20 or 40 chickens, and drinks the blood of all of those chickens. But at this more mild version, he's eating the coconut, and you can see he's even ripping the coconut open with his bare hands. So it looks like he might still be hungry for more. Let's see if they give him more to eat. So this was really interesting, but you can imagine how ferocious, how fierce Guliga must be uh, when he drinks the blood of all of those chickens, which we got to see later that night. As human beings, we were also very hungry after a long day of travel and of being at the cola. 
So we went back to Malika's family's house and we ate some delicious South Indian food off of banana leaves, banana leaves that they cut from their own yard. So we enjoyed some food together and we ate with our hands, of course. Got to meet more family members. And cleanup is very easy. They just compost all of the leaves. We said thank you to the family, and then we headed back to the cola for the second round of the ritual, which started at midnight, and we stayed for about three hours. We left at 3 a.m. The next morning, after staying up all night at the Kola, after seeing such a powerful ritual, yeah. it felt incredible to run into the Arabian Sea and feel the warm water. Welcome to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> This morning at Mangalore, I was feeling so grateful and so alive and so, so energized even after not sleeping that long. To me, this quick trip to Mangalore, this is a two-day trip, was really such a big reminder to stay flexible, stay open. It's okay to change plans for a couple of days and go somewhere I wasn't expecting to go and say yes to something I had never even imagined. As I travel, I want to remember to always have enough time and flexibility to say yes to spontaneous invitations that feel right. Also to say yes to friendships with new people that feel like home, even in a faraway place. It feels so good to be here in this beautiful place and to have the privilege of time and also to have this quality with me of openness and wonder wherever I go.